ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا اما بعد فاني اشكر الله سبحانه وتعالى على ما من به علينا من هذا اللقاء واساله سبحانه وتعالى ان يرزقنا واياكم العلم النافع المثمر للعمل الصالح اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وارزق اللهم الثبات على السنه I praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thank him once again for allowing us to spend some time together <coughs> learning what we can from the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the only way we're going to worship Allah correctly is through knowledge, by learning how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala correctly. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all beneficial knowledge that produces righteous actions. O oh Allah, teach us what <coughs> that which will benefit us and help us and assist us to put to practice that which you teach us. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala firmness upon the sunnah. I welcome all of you once again. Inshallah ta'ala, today at this present moment we're going to talk about once again, bring this topic of extreme importance. We've heard it many times, but because this is something that is important in our lives, then we're going to bring it again, inshallah ta'ala, and discuss it again. Ahamiyyatul salat fi hayat al-Muslim. The importance of salat, the importance of the prayer in our lives, as Muslims. This is a talk I want to share with you by the noble Shaykh al-Allama, Muhammad ibn Salih ibn Uthaymeen, رحمه الله تعالى وغفر له لوالديه والمسلمين والمسلمات أمين بدأ الشيخ فقال الصلاة هي الركن الثاني من أركان الإسلام وهي أركد أركان الإسلام بعد الشهادتين To know how important the salat is Number one This is the second pillar from the five pillars of Islam that's how important the prayers. For one, they are the second pillar from the pillars of Islam. Right after Tawheed. Because we know Islam is built upon five pillars. Number one, to bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah and that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah. Number two is the Salat. Iqam is Salat. To establish the prayers. So this is one of the great and most important pillars from the pillars of Islam. وَكَذَلِكَ الصَّلَاةُ هِيَ سِلَةٌ بَيْنَ الْعَبْدِ وَرَبِّهِ Now, Salat also is very important because it is a connection between the server and his Lord. You're connecting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Through these prayers, Turn to Allah, you stand in front of Allah, you praise Allah, you glorify Allah, you thank Allah, you bow down for Allah, you prostrate for Allah, you humble yourself, and then you have the opportunity to ask Allah, to invoke Allah, to beg Allah in your sujood, for instance. The Prophet ﷺ said <coughs> in Sad Hadith, إِنَّ أَحَدَكُمْ إِذَا صَلَّى يُنَاجِ رَبَّهِ Verily, when one of you pray, you remember you're in front of Allah SWT and you are asking Allah things. As in the Hadith Al-Qudsi, Allah SWT says, قَسَمْتُ الصَّلَاةَ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَ عَبْدِ نِصْفَيْنِ وَلِعَبْدِ مَسَعَدِ I have made the salat in two parts between me and my servant. 
and form a servant what he or she asks for. قال الله تعالى إذا قال العبد الحمد لله رب العالمين قال الله تعالى حمدني عبد So now when you recite Al-Fatiha which is one of the pillars of Salat to be exact that's the third pillar in the Salat from the pillars of the prayer to recite Surat Al-Fatiha and it's a pillar in it in every raka'ah, in every unit. <clears throat> so now, keep in mind that when you say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, My servant has praised me. Has praised me. وَإِذَا قَالَ الرَّحْمَنَ الرَّحِيمُ When you say الرَّحْمَنَ الرَّحِيمُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said أَثْنَى عَلَيَّ عَبْدِي My servant has exalted me. وَإِذَا قَالَ مَالِكِ يَوْمِ الدِّينِ قَالَ مَجْجَدَنِي عَبْدِي When you say مَالِكِ يَوْمِ الدِّينِ Allah says my servant has venerated me. فَإِذَا قَالَ إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ So when you say Iyaka na'bu, you are alone, we worship. Wa iyaka nasta'in, and we seek help from you alone. Qala hada bayni wa bayna abdi wa li abdi ma asa. He said, This ayah, one part for is for me, and one part is for my servant, and for my servant that which he or she asked for. Wa idha qala hadina sirat al mustaqim, sirat al ladina anamta alayhim, gayr al mawdubi alayhim, wa al ta'alim. And when the servant says, O oh Allah, guide us as a straight path, keep us firm upon it, the path of those that you have conferred upon them your favors and blessings, not the path of those that earn your anger, nor those who went astray. He said, This is for my servant, and for my servant, that which he asked for. <clears throat> So, so far, Salat is one of the pillars of Islam, one of the great pillars of Islam. And also, Salat is a salam. It connects you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to your Lord. And also, Salat, linguistically, Salat is a dua. Linguistically, you should remember, if you look at the definition and the meaning, the meaning of of a salat in the in the lugha is a dua invocation. That's why you find in some of the ayat or the ahadith you find the term salat salli alayhim, which means invoke, make dua for them, make dua for them, salli alayhim. A make dua for them, for instance. Wafil istilah, <clears throat> but the salat in Islam it means majmu'a min al aqwal wal afal, muftataha bi takbir wa muftatama bi tislim. Sheikh says, but in Islam, what salat mean? Prayer. What mean this salat? Look, linguistically it means dua. Salat means dua. Sometimes some people they say I'm gonna do my prayers and they begin to ask Allah. That's meaning the linguistic meaning of salat. But in Islam, salat is what comprises of statements and actions <coughs> that started with Takbir and ends with Taslim. When you stand in front of Allah and say Allahu Akbar, that's how your Salat starts. And whatever you do after that, from Rukur, Sujood, recitation of Quran, Istighfar, glorification of Allah, Tasbih, all of that is a part of the Salat. Likewise, 
الصلاة هي عون في المهمات ونهي عن الفحشاء والمنكرات نعم القوة الصلاة is a great mean that assists us and helps us in times of difficulties and trials and I'm Salat helps a lot in the times of trials and difficulties likewise Salat prevents from evil and indecencies Allah tells us in the Quran وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَى وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَى Seek help by being patient and by performing the prayers you're going through any difficulty well, as, like, as it relates to your health, wealth, this, that, <coughs> salat. You gotta have patience first because we believe in the qadr of Allah. We Muslims, alhamdulillah, we believe in the one of the pillars of iman is to believe in the qadr. Okay, we believe in the qadr. وَأَن تُؤْمِنَ بِالْقَدَرِ خَيْرِهِ وَشَرِّهِ That you believe in whatever Allah has decreed, the good and the bad. We Muslims, we don't just like whenever things are going good, we're happy, and, and then when Allah tests us, we, we start asking questions, why me, why not, why he, why is that, why is this happening to me? No, you're a servant of Allah. Allah gives you a lot of good things, and you should thank Allah for those things. We shouldn't just like, grow arrogant and, and, and like but rather we have to give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our health look you are healthy a lot of people are sick you have strength a lot of people are weak and you have health, wealth some people are poor <clears throat> you have security and peace people they live in war zones you can drive in a peaceful highway, some people cannot. You go home and it's peaceful and safe, other people, they have no safety, no security whatsoever. And even when you lose your job, there is many other opportunities around you where you live. Other people don't even have a job to begin with. There's nothing going on their way. And when you're sick, mashallah, there is the best doctors, the best hospitals, right there, available for you. Other people, can, they cannot even find an aspirin, man. Nothing. They're sick, nothing. They have nothing. No hospitals. They live in war zones. No hospitals, no doctors, no medicines, nothing. If somebody's bleeding, they bleed to death. Allah must have. Can you imagine a father see his little children, they amputated and can't do nothing for them. Nothing. But we look at the many favors Allah has given us. <clears throat> so we go through tests. How we endure those tests? Allah tells us with two things. Sabr, patience, and salat. Patience is important because if you go through some hardship and begin to yell and get mad and angry, is he going to change something? Is he going to change anything? He's not going to change anything. He's going to make it worse. And he's going to make you lose the reward from Allah SWT he has for those who are patient. So why? Yal and death. Some even Muslims, they start cursing. Start cursing and blaming it on others. Just say, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. I'm a human. I live in this life. This is not Jannah. Jannah, in the paradise, the Jannah, no problems, no issues. Nobody gonna look at you funny. Nobody gonna call you names. You're not gonna lose anything in Jannah. You're not gonna get sick in Jannah. You don't have to worry in Jannah about anything else. It's a worry free. But now we're not in Jannah. Now we're here in this little dunya. This is a place of test. Today you're healthy. Tomorrow, who knows? And that's why from the Sunnah we should ask Allah for health and prosperity, and security, and peace. But if Allah tests us with decrease in wealth, decrease in health, in lives, properties, 
They say, Alhamdulillah, this was coming. This was coming. Why some of us are surprised when they get sick? Or they're surprised when somebody looks at you funny in the airport? Why are you surprised? Why? And now you want to take it matter to yourself and you want to do something about it instead of remembering this ayah, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَى Likewise, if you go through any hardship or difficulty, the first thing should come to you after the sabr, salat. Come and pray. Why? Because in the prayer, mashallah, your heart is going to be expanded. You're going to feel better. You stand in front of Allah, the Almighty. Some people, they go through hardship, they run to some people. Oh, can you help me? Can you do this for me, man? Can you get me out of this? And you forget about Allah. You're going to run to a human being just like you? Yes, a human being, they help you on this, but run to Allah first. Any difficulty, run to Allah and ask Allah, beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> Likewise, salat, ya khwan, tanha anil fahshaa wa anil munkar. Inna salat tanha anil fahshaa wa anil munkar. Salat helps us. And, and it is a protection from evil. Know, but, but the ulama, they said this is for someone who knows the purpose of salat, not someone who just pray. Salat, for certain of us, is just like moves, like yoga or something. Allah, salam alaikum, and this is it. Salat should not be like that. Should not be just like an exercise. Salat is beyond that, subhanAllah. Because you stand in front of Allah. So you prepare yourself for that. People, they prepare themselves. If somebody is going to stand in front of the mayor of the city, huh? they get an invitation for the governor. You think they prepare, right or wrong? He then is going to go there and start looking all over around. They humble themselves and like turn off their phone. They don't want to know of destruction, nothing. Why? Because that person to them is important, at least to his position. Now, we should do better than that when we stand in front of Allah in Salat. You're about to stand in front of Allah, Rabbul Alameen. That human being, you want to go there because the people, they go and say, Oh, man, this is my only opportunity. I'm going to stand in front of this rich person, this person who, mashallah, I can ask for this or that. Ask for what? He may say yes, he may say no. But now you're standing... Every time you stand in the Salat, you stand in front of Rabbul Alameen. To him belongs the dominions of the heavens and the earth. If he wants to give you something, nobody can say no. Nobody. So this is the one that we should prepare ourselves for. Salat should not just be a routine. Allah, Akbar, As-Salamu I'm gone. No. You say, this is important. This is the Salat that helps us change in our lives. This is the Salat that will have an impact in our lives. This is the Salat that gives serenity, tranquility, peace of mind and ease. Because he wants to get that from it. Okay? Salat is not just exercise and some moves. It's the condition of the heart it has to be present in the prayer. Some people, yes, he's in the Salat, but his mind is all over the place. He's in Salat, standing in between the people in the row, but his mind, he's still counting the money, he's still planning what he's going to do. So much so, if the Imam make a mistake and pray seven rak'at, you find some of us pray seven rak'at, no problem. Why? And then they like, well, the Salat was long today, right? Yeah, because it was long and wrong. But he didn't pay attention because his mind was not there. <coughs> You have to focus Salat when you come, say, look, uh, this Salat is so important. Allah mentioned it in many places in the Quran. And this Salat was beloved to the Prophet Sallallahu It was a comfort of his eye, actually. You remember the, the comfort of the eye? It's something that you see or you do and you feel so good. Right wrong. There are certain things you do and you feel so good. People have different, they have different needs when it comes to that. People, they see something and feel so good. 
Prophet Sallallahu Salat is to make him feel so good. Who is the comfort of his eyes? Some people, the Salat is a burden on them, like a mountain. <clears throat> When they enter the Salat, they can wait until the Imam says, Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah. If the Imam recites a little bit long, they will like, oh, this Imam has to go. Yeah, it's too much, too long. Why? Because it's so burdened. But those who enter the Salat with the other attitude, They can win. They, they, will, they wish that the Salat be long because they feel it. They feel the goodness and the, and the, and the sweetness of it. <clears throat> Now, as Salat ibad Allah tumha biha al khataya wa tukaffar al sayyat. Aynam. Aynam. To the Salat, Salat, wipe out the sins. Look at the mercy and the rahmah of Allah. Remember, we human, we wrong ourselves, we commit sins, we're negligent, we don't praise Allah as we should, we don't thank Allah as we should, and we, do, we, we, we fall into a lot of violations. Everyone should know this by himself. You don't have to wait until somebody point out your mistake, oh, I saw you doing this. No, you know what you're doing, brother. You should know what you're doing and what you're not. When it comes to negligence, we're negligent. When it comes to falling into things that we have no business falling into, Allah al-Musta'am, Allah have mercy on us. Salat is one of the means that, subhanAllah, of forgiveness of those sins. Who said that? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, أَرَأَيْتُمْ لَوْ أَنَّ نَهْرًا بِبَابِ أَحَدِكُمْ يَغْتَسِلُ فِيهِ كُلَّ يَوْمٍ خَمْسِ مَرَّاتٍ هَلْ يَبْقَى مِنْ دَرَنِهِ أَيْ وَسَخِهِ شَيْءٍ Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم معلم الناس الخير He was sent by Allah to teach mankind the good and there is not a good except that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم has taught and showed it to the people and there is not an evil or a path that leads to evil except that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم has warned against Alhamdulillah, we praise Allah All we have to do is to learn. The more we learn with the Sunnah, the better it's going to be for us and our lives are going to be in order, Alhamdulillah. Okay? Knowledge is a power. Knowledge gives you strength and certainty. Ignorance is associated with weakness and confusion. If you don't know something, it's the most difficult for you until you learn it, right or wrong. You remember when you were a kid? Just riding a bike, you always like, bike, how can I do this? No way, this is difficult. But once you try it, couple of days, couple of weeks, man, you're good at it now. And when you hear another kid say, how oh, can I can't ride the bike? Come on, man, it's a piece of cake, brother. Why? Because, so remember, everything that you don't know is the most difficult for you until you know how you do it. Once you learn how you do it, become a piece of cake, as they say. Prophet is used to teach by example, alhamdulillah, he used to strike examples for us to make it easy for us. Once he said to the companions, do you see if one of you has a flowing river, clean river, in front of his house? Somebody like his house, right there, there is a river flowing in front of his house. Fresh water. And that person taking a bath five times a day. Not just once a week or once a day. Because some people, they take a shower every day. Now this person here, he's taking a shower from that fresh water five times a day. Prophet Sassami says, do you see any dirt on this person? They says, no. Five times a day, that's enough. That person is going to be clean. Prophet Sassami says, كَذَلِكَ مَثَلُ الصَّلَوَاتِ الْخَمْسِ يَمْحُ اللَّهُ بِهِنَّ الْخَطَاءِ Prophet Sassami says, the likewise, this is the same example for the five obligatory prayers, they wipe out the sins. Long. If we only know this is the only benefit of Salat, every Muslim be praying. Pray wrong. Every Muslim be praying. If we understand just this, if there is no other virtues and benefits for Salat, except that the prayers, they wipe out our sins, and we commit sins, we wrong ourselves, we have shortcomings, that will be it. 
Can you imagine if somebody rich in the community said to the people, look, I know you guys are struggling, you have a lot of debts, a lot of things, a lot of that. If you pray five times, don't worry about any debts. I forgive you. Any debt they have with me, you don't have to pay me a dime. What do you think people will do? Right. You think they're going to go watch the game? Huh? They're going to go fishing? Okay, he's going to go watch LeBron James. And then, still now he has to pay the man the money. And then the man said to him, look man, why, why the game? You watch that guy, he didn't give you nothing. Rather you pay to watch it. And now you still have to pay me. All you have to do is to make the right choice. Salat, the game. The game is Salat. The game is in the time of the Salat. Which one comes first? We Muslims. Salat or the game? Salat. The game ain't going to help you in anything. Salat help you. See, see we human, we know that. If, if there is somebody like that, and you're like, no. Even if someone says, let's go to the game, he's on me, I pay. So listen, man, it's not about the game. It's about some debts I have, and if I don't come in the Salah, this guy, man. <laughs> what about the sins? But if you go to the game, you may even add more sins, right around. With the music, and the women, and all the mixing, no Salat in the Masjid, adding even more to the problem. See, what, what helps us make a right decision is to always remember who we are, why we're in this life, why we're in this dunya. Did Allah tell us that we're here to worship Him, or did He tell us that we're here to do whatever He wants to do? It's the first one, right? You agree with me? We're here to worship Allah SWT. <clears throat> and with that, yes, you can have some fun. You can go and play some ball with the people, but not on the time of the summer. Not on the time of your obligations. You gotta go to work, you gotta go to work. You're not gonna uh, quit work and go play. So why would a person don't pray? And some of the people, they just mix the pray and the play. You know, the L and the R, they have problems with that. There is pray with R and play with L. And there is a big difference between the two letters, right? So there is a time to play and there is time to pray. So no playing when you, be sh when you should be praying. That's how it is. But some people, they just they play or pray. It's all the same. It's not the same. It's not the same. <clears throat> so this is a great ni'mah from Allah SWT. That the Salat, subhanAllah, is expiation of the sins. Another hadith, the Prophet SAW, he says, Al-Jumu'ah. الصلوات الخمس والجمعة إلى الجمعة كفار لما بينهن ما لم توش الكبائر. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says the five obligatory prayers and Jumu'ah to the next one are expiations of the sins that took place between them. On account that major sins are avoided, meaning expiation of minor sins. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says the five obligatory prayers: Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha. And Jumu'ah to another Jumu'ah. They are expiation of the sins that take place between them. You pray Fajr, Allah forgive you the sins that took place between Isha and Fajr. You pray Dhuhr, sins that took place between Fajr and Dhuhr are forgiven and likewise. The ulama, they said this is a daily forgiveness. Daily forgiveness. And also there is a weekly forgiveness. From Jumu'ah to another Jumu'ah. You attend Jumu'ah prayer, that's expiation that took place between that Jumu'ah and the, and, and, the, and the previous one. This is from the mercy of Allah. Allah wants good for us, all we have to do is to want good for ourselves. Easy. Allah didn't tell us, camp in the masjid, give up dunya, give up school. No. Yeah, you can get the best degree you want. You can be the richest person, but just do what means that are halal. Make sure the, the source is halal and permissible and it should not take you away from the reason why you're created. 
You don't have, if you spend all your life trying to get rich, but you neglect the salat, neglect Allah, neglect your obligation, that money ain't going to help you in your muqiyah. The rich person, they're not going to be rich in your muqiyah. We know it in here. When they die, they don't bury with them their, their money. That stays for those who are still alive, right or wrong. Have you even seen a U-Haul truck following someone's funeral? And you're like, wait a minute, uh, what's that U-Haul truck going to the cemetery? Oh yeah, yeah, the man, uh, his, all his jewelry, cars, and furniture, and clothing, and money. He can go, go down with him and go down the ground. They're like, no way. Never seen one. Have you ever once seen a U-Haul truck? That money ain't going nowhere. It's going to stay for those who are still alive. And what are they going to do with it? It's <laughs> Allah, Allah must have. So that's why it's important for us. Even if Allah gives you money, you should be grateful and say, Alhamdulillah, Allah makes me better than others. You have money and well, and health. You're, you're rich and healthy. Subhanallahu Akbar. Alhamdulillah. And you're a Muslim and a part Sunnah. Say, Subhanallah, Allah is so merciful to me. And do something about it. Be grateful. Your health, use it in a way upon ibadah. Your wealth, likewise, take care of yourself, take care of your families. Help the needy, the poor. Help spread knowledge. Maintain the houses of Allah that they teach Sunnah and Tawheed. Because that stuff, when you die, that stuff is going to continue to be on your good deeds. You see? Anything that you do here for Allah, while, while you can, because once every one of us die, this is it. You can do nothing else. And remember, death is certain. Tomorrow is not for any one of us. Yes, but some of us are still young. Or we be planning, but a lot of young people, they die. Okay? That doesn't make no difference. <clears throat> All we have to do is to be prepared for that, which is another topic, actually, for another time. But this Salat, Ya Khwan, also, especially now Salat al jamaah we men, we pray in the Masjid. You're close to the Masjid, you come to the Masjid. Especially if you hear the Adam. In America now, it's, it's difficult. A lot of Muslims, they live far from the Masjid. So therefore, it's not an obligation upon them to attend. Because the obligation, the ulama, they says, is upon hearing the Adam. That's why if you live in a land of Muslims, alhamdulillah, there is a lot of messages. A lot of messages, alhamdulillah. And you will hear the Adam. Then the men go and pray in the mesh. But if you live in America, you should look at what's better for you. Because when you pray in the masjid, you get 27 times better. As opposed if you pray home. Along with many things, when you come to the masjid, you're going to smile at someone's face and that's good for you. You're going to shake someone's hand and that's good for you. And you're going to maybe help somebody or or whatever, being in the masjid, and with every step you make, Allah raise your level and give you good deed and forgive your sin. This stuff is not going to happen to you when you stay home. And you come early and, and mashallah, and, and you know on your way you may help somebody, you may remove some harms from the way, you may pick somebody. All of these good things happen to you by coming to the masjid to pray. Even for those people who is not obligatory upon them to come to the masjid. But every one of us should do what they can to increase in good deeds. Right or wrong? We all, as a human, we need, if we're given the opportunity to increase in our livings, our earnings, usually we do or not? We do. Let's say you work in a job. They said, look, man, we hire you, and what's mandatory upon you is to work 40 hours a week, okay? 40 hours. From Monday to Friday, for example, at 12, all right? Because we're Muslims now, we can play with the examples. Because we are Muslims now. They said, let's say from Sunday until Thursday. But then, 
Every Wednesday or Tuesday, the managers, they put out a signing sheet for overtime. And it's nice pay, good pay, better than what you make. All right, if I need money or you need money, what do you do? You sign up or not? You don't say, ah, oh, it's not obligatory, I don't care. Yeah, you know it's not obligatory. But there is good in it for you, right or wrong. You sign up for that. Usually people do that. You don't need to tell the people that. People will be asking manager, hey, uh, when are you going to put that signing sheet, man? I want to be the first one in there, right? But see, those who they know how important the prayers and how important to be in the masjid early, they becoming early in the masjid. Coming early. Not like, oh, Maghrib at 7.30, we show up at 7.31. No, people, they show up way hour, two hours before Salat. Why? Because they know the importance of being in the masjid. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our hearts for that. I mean, now. <clears throat> and when you come to the masjid, subhanahu wa look at the tranquility, the peace. You sit in, subhanAllah, tranquility. Because you're around beautiful people. They're doing the same thing. Nobody going to nag you. You don't hear music. You don't see a woman half-dressed coming through here. None of that. That stuff happens outside. Once you get out of the masjid, you're on your, you're on your own now. But you're in the masjid, mashallah, tranquility, peace of mind. You look around, this guy taking note. This one is his head down because he's really thinking about it. Some guy over here, you see it in his face and he's like, subhanAllah, that's me. I, I got to do something about this. That's all you see. And you learn it. So it's a joyful experience, mashallah, in the house of Allah. But this salat now, as we mentioned earlier, and Sheikh Muratimin mentioned, how we get the benefit from it. Number one, we have to have khushu' in it. Not everybody who comes to the masjid, let's say a hundred people, they all came and pray Jumu'ah or pray Dhuhr or Fajr or Asr or Maghrib. You think, Alhamdulillah, they're all there. That's one thing, for sure. But all of them get the same benefit? No, it's not the case. It's not the case. They're all there. But they're not all get the same benefit, right? Same one. Somebody see 100 people go to Amazon or whatever to work, to this job, to this lab, whatever, to work. And then all of them, they have the same, they have the same pay? No, they don't. All of them work there. But the paychecks are different. What this person take home from the next one, they all walk from, they park in the same parking lot, they go through the same doors, railroad, but then this guy's paycheck is maybe triple, quadruple, hundred times. Why? He has nothing to do with these guys from this country. He's white, he's black, he's this, he's that. None of that. Has to do with what? Who can answer? None other? Performance. Performance. Who else? To do with? And the performance has to do with what? Positions, knowledge, knowledge. Huh? that's why. This guy, he just started working today. This person, he's a supervisor. This person, he's a manager. This person, he's a CEO. This person is CEA. It's, it is such thing, I don't know. Whatever, it is? <laughs> no, huh? CEO, we have COO. COO, that's what I want to say. So we have CEO and COO. Uh -huh. Vice President, executive. We have Vice President, Executive, the, the owner, this, many things. And even those people who are work, they don't even have no job, no positions, but some of them making more money than others because they, they, they put a lot of time in there and they've been coming. Why can't they? Likewise, but see in the masjid, subhanAllah, you don't have to be CEO or this, or manager, because if, for example, for alhamdulillah in our masjid, you don't have managers and supervisors and stuff. We do have an administration, which is very important to keep in mind, that those brothers in the administration, may Allah reward them, 
they do a lot of work for the community. And you should make dua for them, you should appreciate what they do. Because we have to make them feel better and feel good so that they can continue to do the things that we don't do. You know what I'm saying? Many of us, we just to be the last one to come to the message, and we, have, we, don't, we don't even know what's going on. It takes a lot to run a message. Just use your house, for example, your house. If you don't pay the rent, who will pay for you? Nobody. You maintain your house. You pay the bills right in the house. You clean the house. Nobody's going to come and run the vacuum. And you keep an eye on the, on the roof. You keep an eye on the ceiling. You keep an eye on the leak, on the pipes, on this and that. That's what those brothers in the administration, they do. They want to make sure if, if, if the rent is to be paid, they... They think about that all the time. How can we pay the rent? Especially if there is funds that's going low. Me and you, we're going to sleep. Then they think, thinking, how can we generate some money? How, how are we going to turn to how? The bills have to be paid. Me and you, we come. MashaAllah, the light is on. The running water, hot and cold is on. MashaAllah, everything is okay. No, those brothers in the administration, they have their own responsibilities, but they add to this as well. They have to make sure the masjid is clean. If there is a storm and there is a leak, they are the first one to come and do something about it. If the company say, look, man, we're going to come at 7 a.m., they're going to come at 7 a.m., wait for them. All oh, these things, we have to give them credit, man. And, thank, and, and be grateful to Allah that there is amongst us few people who, they don't want this, and we should make their job easy and their responsibility easy now. Sheikh Rajimin, he says, Khushu'a, ya khwan. And what is Khushu'a? Sheikh Rajimin, he gives us an example. Because a lot of people, they ask about Khushu'a. What is Khushu'a? What is Khushu'a? Is it a vegetable that you eat? And then, mashallah, your salad be straight. Is it a pill that you get from JNC? Huh? From, what is it? What is Khushu'a? Somebody have an idea? What is Khushu'a? Naam? No. Focus. no, for sure. The focus in the salah. Focus in the salah. For sure. I know. No doubt. Focus in the salah. Focus. Focus. Tranquility. Tranquility. Okay, good. But I'm still looking for one word. But what make you focus? How you focus? How you focus? With your heart. Ahsan. That's what I'm looking for. Hudur al qalb. The heart has to be present. That's what you have for sure. You got that tranquility, that focus, meaning your heart has to be in the prayer, not just your body. Some of us, we hear, alhamdulillah. But then as soon as we say, Allahu Akbar, does your heart focus on the salat or making plans all over the place, but the salat? That's what makes a difference. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises the believers and he mentioned many, many good qualities of that. You can read the beginning of Surah Al-Mu'minun, chapter 22 in the Qur'an. Allah says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Successful are indeed the believers. The believers are successful. Who said this? Allah. So they are, no doubt whatsoever, they are successful. May Allah make us from the man. Who are they? Allah says, الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ The first of their qualities, why they are successful, why they are believers and successful, is that they are those who have khushur, tranquility in the heart, in salat. Allah didn't say those who pray. People can pray. Sometimes you find a non-Muslim come and pray, put a kufiyon and pray. What are you going to say to him? 
you feel you look like you're not a Muslim? No, you don't. People, the Iqamah is called people, they stand up and pray. How do you know this is a Muslim or not Muslim? You have no clue. And you shouldn't even worry about that. No. So one of the, some prayers I feel like I may have for sure, but other prayers, I finished the prayer, and I realized I was, my mind was all over. Do you repeat the prayer or no? You just say stuff for a long time. <clears throat> No, you don't repeat. If a person loses the khushur in the salat, yeah. he don't repeat the salat. He just learn. Them. But what he's saying is important. He should say, SubhanAllah, man. This is Because losing the khushur is not one of the things that nullify the salat. But if somebody loses tahara, lose wudu, then yes, that person has to make up the salat. Okay, or somebody laughed in the salat. Not just smile, but he laughed in it. The ulama, they said that's one of the things that break the salat. Somebody drink something or ate something in the salat. <laughs> you never know. Sometimes person hungry, and then he's a little kid passing by, a donut, a little... He think nobody sees him. And he start eating. That's break the salat, the ulama he says. Or uh, make a lot of moves in the salat, the ulama he says also that break the salat. Some people they stand the salat and they like make a lot of moves. They check in the phone, phone starts in the right pocket, now he's in the left pocket, now he's in here. I don't know what they're doing. A lot of moves, that's not good in the salat. You have to humble, you stand in front of Allah. Remember we gave the example earlier, somebody standing in front of the mayor of the city, he ain't going to be making no moves like that. Right wrong. He's going to stand still. Because he's standing in front of the mayor, no, he's standing in front of Rabbul Alameen. Allah so you have to humble yourself. But it's a good thing, like Adam says, when a person, subhanAllah, after he finished, like subhanAllah, man, my mind was all over the place. So then he can take a note and try to correct it. Try to correct that luck so that the next Salat, inshallah, he's going to try his best to make sure that his heart is present, not just his body. Okay, that's why Allah SWT says, يُقِيمُونَ salat. When Allah praises, like in Surah the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, the Muflihun, those who are successful, he says, from their characteristics, once again, they establish the prayers, not perform the prayers. That's a big difference. Not everybody who performed the prayer has established it. Sheikh Sa'di, ta'ala, in the tafsir, in his tafsir, he says, establish it is, first of all, you, you have to have the khushur. <coughs> Meaning that your heart and mind are present in the salat. Not just your body, but your mind. You're thinking about the business, whatever, planning, what you're going to do. Now your mind, you have to focus on the salat. You focus on the Qur'an. You focus on everything you do, every move. And also, with that, that a person has to... Fulfill the conditions of the Salah. There are nine conditions. I was going to talk about them. I don't think we have time. There is nine conditions for the Salah. And there is 14 pillars. And 10 obligatory elements. That's what found in the books of the ulama. Like Al-Mulakhas al-Fiqhi of Shaykh Salah al fuzan Nine conditions for the prayer to be sound. Everyone should perform those, fulfill those conditions to the best of their abilities. And 14 pillars and 10 requirements or obligatory elements, wajibat, and mini sunnah. This is what we should, this is what a person really is establishing the prayer. But as someone who just stand in there, Allah Akbar, and waiting for the Imam to say Allah Akbar, then he say Allah Akbar. He has no clue what, what rakah he's in. He just following the imam. Or when he pray by himself, Allahu Akbar in his mind is all over his world. Spacing out, traveling, counting money, making plans. 
That person is not going to benefit from that salah. But rather a person, his mind and his heart has to be present in the prayer. Now, <clears throat> Shalom. We have like five minutes. Let us review, inshallah ta'ala, from you brothers. Give us some benefits from what we highlighted and shared with you from this uh, great talk. And a reminder once again of our noble Shaykh al Allama Muhammad bin Salih al-Uzaymin, rahimahullah ta'ala, as it relates to this very, very important topic, which is the Salat, the importance of the Salat in our lives. The Salat that we perform and we establish, we should establish, alhamdulillah, then it's very important. The Salat is, is a great act of worship, has a great benefit for us, but for those amongst us who knows these benefits and try their best to get those benefits inshallah. Now, we want some benefits, meaning share with us something that you have written down or something that you remember. Now, Adam. I got from, uh, this, is, this is amazing right here, from, you said the Prophet said that those between the five, so was on between the five obligatory prayers and a Jum'a, all the sins are forgiven. So from prayer to prayer and from Jum'a to Jum'a. Ah, well, as, as long as no major sins are ah, uh, sent, I know. Um, done. The five obligatory prayers and Jum'a to Jum'a are expiations for the sins so, on account that the major sins are avoided. Now, very good point. Now, another point. Now, Ahsant, Salah, Salatun Bain al Abdi wal Rabbi. The Salat is a connection, subhanAllah. Keep you connected. It's a great mean. SubhanAllah, look at the phone. If you keep it connected and charged, you can benefit from it. But if you get it out of the charge, you're going to benefit a little bit, but it's going down, way down, until die. Likewise, those people who don't pray, I don't know how they live. I don't know, that's not a life. So the real life is the life upon Tawheed, upon Ibadah, and upon obedience. Now, another benefit? The Salat keeps us away from evil. Ahsan, Salat help you stay away from evil. I know. But the Salat that benefits person is the Salat that is done for Allah. And the person has to know the objectives of the prayer. Sometimes people, well, they pray, but they, can, they do a lot of evil because they don't focus on the sun. Okay, it's important. Now, Establishing the prayer is different than performing the prayer. Anybody can perform the prayer. By standing, Allah Akbar, making those moves, we know you perform the prayer. But who really established the prayer and benefit from it is the one who have for sure his heart is present, not only the body. His mind is present on the Salat, not on business, dunya, I don't know what. And fulfill the obligations, the, the, the conditions to the best of their abilities, the pillars to your best of your ability, and the obligatory elements in the sunnah. That's a person. But this requires a knowledge. Somebody who don't know what are the condition of the salat, don't know the pillars of the salat, how are you going to fulfill something he don't know? Which brings us once again to learn the condition of the salat, to learn the pillars of the salat, to learn the obligatory elements of the Salat and likewise. That's why I gave you the book reference al mulakhas al-Fiqhi of Shaykh Salih al-Fawzan. A summary of Islamic jurisprudence by Shaykh Salih al-Fawzan. It's on PDF actually. Volume 1 and Volume 2. You can Google it. Put it on Google if you don't have the book. Yeah, a summary of Islamic jurisprudence Shaykh Salih al-Fawzan. PDF Volume 1. You go to the section of the Salat. And you look at the conditions of the Salat, pillars of the Salat, and you will see that. Inshallah. Now, <coughs> Ahsan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَةِ You're going through any difficulties, the first thing that should come to your mind, patience. I'm a servant of Allah, 
Allah is testing me, I got to be patient. Because that's what I believe in the qadr of Allah, the good and the bad of it. And the second thing that's going to help me is the prayer. Like we mentioned, certain people in a time of difficulty, they run away from the salat. Run away from the messages. When somebody say, Masjid say, ah, come on, my salat is the last thing on my mind, brother. I'm going through all these problems and you tell me, go to the masjid. That's what Allah tells you, not me. You're going through hardship, the first thing that should come to your mind is salat. I'm going to run to Allah. I'm going to the place where Allah wants me to be in times of, I'm seeking help right now. And then you come to the masjid and put your head on the ground and ask Allah. Some of us, we don't ask Allah, but we go and humiliate ourselves in front of some kafir. He or she, please help me, I got children. Why don't you do that in front of Allah? Why do you want to humiliate yourself in front of Kufar? And you have the great opportunity. You got to go make Torah card and ask Allah. And yes, alhamdulillah, it's permissible to go and seek help from other people. But you don't go that with the intention that those people are going to help you. Those people, they're not going to help you unless if Allah allows it. Right or wrong. If Allah allow it, you thank Allah, then thank them. But if Allah didn't allow it, you don't be mad at them. Because Allah didn't allow them. Let's thank them, say thank you. They say, we didn't help you, and you say thank us? Yeah, because it's not, it's not up to you. It's up to Allah. Like, you just here. You help certain people, you don't help others. You're not the one that help it. If, you, if they fire you today, you're not going to be able to help yourself. Real wrong. If the manager comes in and says, hey, Miss Jones, you're fired. So you can't even help yourself. Allah, he's the one who gives and he's the one who takes. you just here to help and facilitate that. There may be a way for them to understand. Subhanallah, you Muslims like that? Yeah, this is how it is. I'm not going to big nobody. Yeah, alhamdulillah, we're grateful. We're thankful. Somebody will help you. Yes, you, 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 you make dua for them and be nice to them. But you should know that they helped you only because Allah wants that for you. Okay? And, uh, and this way your, your heart is always attached to Allah, not to somebody. It's always attached to Allah. Amen. Uh, you thank somebody, but your heart is attached to Allah because you know He's the one who gave it to you. That person was just wasila. Okay? Okay. And you thank them and that's it. But not like whenever you see them. No, you can't do that. Hey, now, barakallahu feekum, jazakum Allah khairan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa taslim wa kathira. We passed the time like three minutes or two minutes. I do apologize. Okay?